On this day, the Lord has acted. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Welcome to our service for morning prayer, coming to you from Trinity's Chapel in Southport, Connecticut. I'm Peggy Hodgkins, the rector here at Trinity, and I welcome you to our worship service. Today, we remember a saint uh, who was the Archbishop of Canterbury in the 10th century, and his name was Alphege. Alphege served as a monk at Deerhurst, England, and then as abbot in Bath, and then through Archbishop Duncan, Dunstan's influence, he became Bishop of Winchester. He was instrumental in bringing the Norse king, Olaf Tryggvason, only recently baptized to King Ethelred of England in 994 to make his peace because this was in a time of the waves of Scandinavian invasions of England. And then he was transferred to Canterbury in 1005 and captured by the Danes in 1011. He refused to allow a personal ransom to be collected from his already overburdened people. Seven months later, he was brutally murdered. Despite the Viking commander Thorkell's effort to save him by offering all of his possessions, except his ship, for the archbishop's life. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle relates that the Danes were much stirred against the bishop because he would not promise them any fee and forbade that any man should give anything for him. They were also much drunken and took the bishop and led him to their hustings and on the eve of the Saturday after Easter, they shamefully killed him. They overwhelmed him with bones and horns of oxen and one of them smote him with an axe iron on the head so that he sunk downwards with the blow and his holy blood fell on the earth whilst his sacred soul was sent to the realm of God. And so today we remember Alphege, Archbishop of Canterbury and martyr in the year 1012, over a thousand years ago. As we think of the invasion of the coronavirus, I was likening that to the invasion of the Danes. How do we, how do we keep our spiritual disciplines? How do we keep our faith in light of uh, such an onslaught to our society, such a change? And yet Alphege stands for us as, as a wonderful model of, of faithfulness and discipleship that connects to us even in our day today. So thanks be to God for his witness. Amen. In the Book of Common Prayer, uh, our service begins on page 80. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Let us say together, Christ our Passover on page 83. Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Our psalms appointed for today are Psalms 1, 2, and 3. So we're starting at the beginning of the Psalter again today in this new season of Easter. Psalm 1 can be found in your prayer book on page 585. Happy 
are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Psalm 2. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the people mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up in revolt and the princes plot together against the Lord and against his anointed? Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. He whose throne is in heaven is laughing. The Lord has them in derision. Then he speaks to them in his wrath, and his rage fills them with terror. I myself have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Let me announce the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. This day have I begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush them with an iron rod and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord in fear, and with trembling bow before him, lest he be angry and you perish, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are they all who take refuge in him. Psalm 3, Lord, how many adversaries I have, how many there are who rise up against me, how many there are who say of me, there is no help for him and his God. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me. You are my glory, the one who lifts up my head. I call aloud upon the Lord, and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down again and go to sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I do not fear the multitudes of people who set themselves against me all around. Rise up, O Lord, set me free, O my God. Surely you will strike all my enemies across the face. You will break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be upon your people. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, chosen and destined by God the Father, and sanctified by the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, which, though perishable, is tested by fire, may redound to praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Without having seen him, 
you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with unutterable and exalted joy. As the outcome of your faith, you obtain the salvation of your souls. The prophets who prophesied of the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired about this salvation. They inquired what person or time was indicated by the Spirit of Christ within them when predicting the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glory. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but you, in the things which have now been announced to you by those who preach the good news to you through the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. say together Canticle 19, The Song of the Redeemed, on page 94. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of according to John, chapter 14, verses 8 to 17. Verses 1 to 17. Jesus said to Peter, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will also take you to myself, that where I am going, you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we shall be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you do not know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I go to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together Canticle number 11. 
the, song, the third song of Isaiah on page 87. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom and shrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no longer be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. This is the collect for the second Sunday of Easter. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery has established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by the faith. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Collect for Alphege, Archbishop of Canterbury and Martyr, in the year 1012. Lord Jesus Christ, who willingly walked the way of the cross, strengthen your church through the example and prayers of your servant Alphege to hold fast the faith, the path of discipleship. For with the Father and Holy Spirit, you live and reign one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Collect for the Renewal of Life, page 99. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, Drive far, from all wrong, drive far from us all wrong desires, 
Incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. Amen. And now we offer our prayers, our thanksgivings and intercessions. Thank you, God, for this beautiful springtime, all the incredible flowers and leaves coming forth, for the very green, wet grass. We thank you for all the new life that surrounds us in this Easter season. We ask that you would bless your people Bless the parish of Trinity Church. Bless those who are home, alone, and feeling lonely or frustrated. Give us patience and courage in this time to do your will and to keep the faith. We pray for those who are sick, for those who suffer from any kind of illness, or sorrow, or adversity of any sort. We pray for those who suffer from this dread coronavirus. We pray that you would give them your healing, sustain them with your grace and love, surround them on every side with encouragement. We pray for the sick in our parish, for Wally, Ron, Joy, Paul Suchland, Peter Swan, Adam DiVanieri, Lisa Fabarini, Drew Lipner, Kathy, Steve Madison, Jimmy Stanek, John, Claudia, Sean, Lucy, Janet, Alexa and Rachel Lynn Wheeler, we pray for the departed, for Suzanne, for Reverend Stephen Chinlin, our former rector here at Trinity. We pray for those on the front lines of battling the virus, looking for cures, all medical staff, hospital workers, doctors, nurses, Thank you, God, for their service. Please support them. We pray for them. We pray that you would be with them now and always. The general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son 
that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, be among you and remain with you on this Monday and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.